Hey, Bottom Pushers, Nick here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the film noir horror game Dollhouse. A Dollhouse was developed by Creazen Studio and published by Soidesco. I don't know if I'm saying that right, so if I'm not, I apologise. Uh, the game is available on PC and PS4 and was released on the 24th of May. Uh, all the footage from this video has come from the PS4 version and thank you to Soadesco for sending that over. As a quick introduction to the game, you play as Marie, an investigator with no memory of who she is or what's happened to her. Uh, you wake up in a room and then have to piece together everything that's gone on beforehand. Uh, to do that you need to find your memories that are scattered through the labyrinth style hallways of the different chapters and as you progress through you start to uncover more and more secrets and everything just gets that little bit more twisted. There's a few different approaches you can take when you start off your journey of Dollhouse, uh, not just in difficulty settings either, there is also a game mode called Voyeur which doesn't change the gameplay as such but it removes the hazards and the kind of death aspects of the game which relieves a little bit of the pressure it's still creepy as all hell but at least you haven't got to be worried about getting stabbed in the back also quite a nice little touch is all of the difficulty settings have been named after different film genres which is a small little thing but works with the overall style i appreciate that i've been waiting for this moment forever we're early too, with a few minutes to spare. You kept your promise, you really did. All my friends will be so jealous. I can't wait to see their faces when I tell them. When I grow up, I'm going to bring my kids here too. I still can't believe my mom is the great Marie, the greatest detective in the world. This is really the best gift anyone could have ever given to me. I wonder what's in Once you've decided how you're going to play the game, you are treated to one of the most in-depth tutorials I've experienced in quite a while. Uh, the game walks you through all of the different gameplay elements while slowly starting to ramp up the fear and the danger. As you begin, there's already a level of tension in the air as you start walking through the claustrophobic and overgrown hallways of the first area, and you have nothing to guide your way apart from a very limited light source, one that drains of pretty quickly and then you need to sit around and wait for it to recharge if you want any sort of protection at all. One of the first things you're introduced to in terms of the controls is your move called flash which that's flash as in bulb flash not crime flash just FYI. The flash is perfect for getting rid of threats so there are traps on the floor if you flash them it deactivates them and one of the most serious threats to your safety are mannequins um yeah mannequins it's awful now as much as the mannequins are things of absolute pure nightmare they are nothing on the real killers that start to stalk you later on in the game so the general gameplay concept behind each chapter is relatively straightforward and your key objective is to find as many memories as you can scattered throughout the the room once you have received a certain amount of memories you can get access to a memory door which generally contains a puzzle or a game that you have to complete. Once you've completed that, you'll get a key which will get you into the dressing room. Once you're in the dressing room, you have to complete a script. Now, I'll go into more detail on the script in a bit. Once you've done the script, you will go back to the editing room and finalize everything and finally piece together that little bit that's happened. All of the chapters 
follow the same sort of principle, but there's just different threats and different challenges in each of the different levels. Now, while you're wandering around, you can get lucky and just stumble across memories as you're looking about. It's possible, but some of them are very well hidden. So to find memories that are hidden and you've got no chance of finding by yourself, you need to use something called focus. And focus is one of the more terrifying aspects of the game. Basically, you press a button and then you get to see what the killer is seeing. So the thing that's stalking you from the shadows, you get to see through their eyes. And that's one thing. But you can also scan the surroundings while you're viewing what they see. To do that, um, it highlights all of the memories in the near area, which is great. But there's a twist. Of course there's a twist. They only show on your screen for a little while, so you need to act quickly. And while up until that point the killer has just been wandering around trying to find you, if you scan the area using them, they know exactly where you are. So while you need to act quickly, they are also acting quickly and they are now coming for you in a much more aggressive way. <laughs> Oh, and as an added bonus, your flash does not work on them the same way as it does with mannequins. If you flash it, it will not disappear. You'll slow it down for a second and you'll stun it, but that gives you just enough time to turn and run as fast as your little legs can carry you. Now, the memories aren't the only thing you need to keep your eyes open for while you're wandering about. As you're on the hunt for the memories, you will also see scrawlings on the wall which are normally just a sentence or two, which normally seem like absolute nonsense, but you can collect them. Doing that is a great way to get yourself a better ranking in the game, because once you reach the dressing room and you have to complete the script, you're going to use those fragments of text to complete the script, so the more of them that you've collected, the better your chance is going to be of actually filling out the right thing. Once you've completed the script, you get a chance to uncover the killer. This gives you a little bit of backstory into just what the hell the thing is that's chasing you. And this also makes them more human. They're still awful and they will still try and kill you, but it's mildly comforting to be killed by something that looks at least semi-human as opposed to the utter monstrosity it was beforehand. So once you've uncovered the killer, you need to get back to the editing room to finally piece together this last little bit of mystery. And this is probably one of the hardest bits of every level because you've uncovered the killer, so you've just made them angry, basically, and they are now going to hunt you a lot more ferociously. Plus, all of the hallways and whatnot have become more deadly. The traps are going to be going off more frequently. The mannequins will likely become more aggressive as well. So you just need to gun it as quickly as you can and try not to die. So you've made it to the editing room and you are temporarily safe. Nothing can hurt you in here. It's a wonderful feeling. Um, now, the last thing you need to do to close off a chapter is to put together a trailer using the memories that you've found along the way. This is where it benefits you to have more memories. You can get the basic amount that you need, but if you get more, then you'll have more options to choose from. You will sometimes be given a director's request, so something you need to do in the trailer to satisfy the director and complete the trailer. Uh, but apart from that, it's up to you how many bits you use, how you can use all five memory slots, or you can just use three. But as long as there's a beginning, middle and end, then you are good to go and you can submit the trailer for review. Uh, the reviews act as your level rankings. So you'll be ranked on things like how many times you died, how many memories you collected, uh, how many times you used the beacon during the game, which is kind of like a little cheat way it kind of gives you a little guide on how to answer the the games uh, all of the reviews are done like actual film critiques which was quite a nice touch some of them are 
particularly cutting if you've not done something pretty well so it's just it's just a little kick while you're down really now there is one thing you need to prepare yourself for before you get stuck into dollhouse and that is the fact that you are going to die and you're probably going to die a hell of a lot especially while you're still getting used to everything at the start of the game and herein lies the problem when you are murdered you're sent back to the editing room and you have to start again which means anything you had collected along the way so any keys to unlock doors any memories you've lost them and they are currently sat with your dead body so you have a choice to make you can either cut your losses start again or if you know whereabouts you died bear in mind everything is an absolute labyrinth you can go back to the chalk outline of your body and initiate a playback which will give you all of your items back it's a risk reward sort of deal The last thing I want to talk about is the upgrade system. So as you're playing through the game, uh, flashing enemies, analysing things to learn more about them, and just generally finding memories and playing the game, you will earn experience, and once you fill the bar, you will go up a fame level and earn yourself a star. Stars are the currency for the upgrades, so when you find a safe, you can then buy yourself new upgrades that you've unlocked, these give you little bonuses like the flash will delay the killer for a little bit you'll be harder to detect just generally things that are going to help keep you alive that little bit longer yeah hopefully you And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Dollhouse. Available now for PC, PS4. Uh, thank you again to Sodesco for sending over a review copy. Like the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done already so you don't miss any future videos. And until next time, hit the music.